Okej, okay. tid betyder. Mm. Archetype discussion. Mm, yep. So last time we we have already talked about the commons and uncommons for each color. The best. The of best them. of them, yeah. And now it's time to look closer at the actual archetypes. Yeah, we're gonna try to bone it out, I guess. <laughs> By looking at the, the signpost uncommons. There's yeah. a gold uncommon in each color pair. And uh, they do stuff that try to indicate what the color pair is about. And then we're also going to try to, to t- find some cards in each color that yeah, so for example, supports our theories. If we're talking about blue-white, we're also going to mention uh, two white cards and two blue cards that looks to fit into the strategy. Mm-hmm. So why don't you start off? We start with uh, the Cloud Blazer. He's blazing the clouds. Yep. Uh, three... Re, uh, three, uh, three white blue. So yeah. it's five mana for a two-two flying, uh, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but when it enters the battlefield, you gain two life and draw two cards. Yeah, so it's compared obviously to Moldrifter, but but you don't, you can't uh, evoke it. No, uh, but still, it it has a powerful enter the battlefield ability. Very powerful. And uh, obviously, if you can do stuff like flicker it or bounce and replay it or mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, the, if you do that with cards with good enter the battlefield effects, yeah, then you get value. Value, and you uh, get card advantage, and uh, you get happy. <laughs> yeah, I will be happy when I bounce this. So let's look a bit at uh, the cards that could go into a strategy like that. We have in white um, uh, acrobatic maneuver. Uh, that's two and a white instant. Exile target creature you control and return it to the battlefield and draw a card. Mm-hmm. So for example, if you uh, if you put it on Cloud Blazer, you draw three cards. You draw three cards life. and uh, gain two life. Yep. Etc. So that's one of the cards that could work. And we also have in white the Wisp Weaver Angel. So it's six mana four for flying. It's reasonable. Yeah, it's a bit uh, expensive if it was just like that. Yep. But when it enters the battlefield, you can <laughs> exile or you may exile another target creature you control. And then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. Yeah, so pretty perfect to play uh, on the turn after you play the cloud base, exactly. for example. But that all, it works with fabricate. Yeah, there are other with... white cards that want this ability. Yeah. And in blue, you, you have another pretty similar card uh, in either Trade Winds. Uh, this is two and a blue for an instant. And now you can bounce one of your permanents and one of your opponent's permanents. Mm-hmm. So. Hopefully you can uh, do it... Uh, Let's say your opponent taps three creatures to crew a vehicle. Yeah. Then you can just bounce the vehicle, bound your own, bounce your own Cloud Blazer, play it again then. Yeah. yeah. Or just bla- bounce uh, uh, the, the second blue card we have. Yeah, the Nimble Innovator. So it's three and a blue, uh, so it's four mana for a two-two. But when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card. Yeah, and even if you don't flicker or replay this, I mean, it's still... You can draw a card and hopefully maybe trade for another card. And there are a lot of creatures that actually trades for a two, for a two two. Yeah, in so, this format. So a lot of two ones and three ones and stuff. So yeah, this is just it looks like a decent value card and it's obviously good in a uh, enter the battlefield type of deck. Mm-hmm. So I guess we'll move on from blue white to. Blue, blue black. black. And um, this, um, I guess, signpost uncommon is Contraband Kingpin. And yeah. uh, that's uh, blue black for a 1 for lifelink. And it also has an ability that when an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you scry one. Mm. And, uh, yeah, so it's basically, uh, the blue black is basically artifact control. Yeah, because this wants to slow things down, it wants to block, it gains you life, and it and scries. scries so and obviously it says artifact on it, so it, it wants artifact. Everything a blue black control deck wants, basically. Yeah, blue black artifact control. So it's, <laughs> a, it's a good name for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if we look at some black cards... We have underhanded designs, so it's two mana enchantment, and we will see more of these enchantments when we go through these yeah, that also, archetypes. Uh, it fits into different archetypes. Uh, whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one. If you do, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Yeah. So you have some life advantage here. You can gain some life or drain your opponent. You can buy time. You can buy some time. And then when you have uh, two or more uh, artifacts, yeah. you can pay uh, one in a black, sacrifice this, and destroy target creature. So then it's just unconditional removal. So obviously in a blue-black 
uh, artifact control deck. It yeah, looks pretty it sweet. looks very good. Uh, we also have, for example, uh, in, in a deck that wants to go long, Oval Chase Daredevil is a pretty grindy little fella. It's 3 in a black for a 4-2. Uh, trades well, mm -hmm. it's a good blocker. It, um, and also, when an, ar an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you may return it from your graveyard. Yeah, exactly. Hand. Even if your opponent uh, removes this, so yeah. it, it, it costs them a card to kill it, yeah. just to attack for one turn, you can play an artifact and then replay this. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it can trade well, and when you they run out of gas, this can also start, come back and start attacking. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's it's also grind value built in in the card. And uh, yeah. We uh, and there are more cards in black as well that benefits from. Yeah, this. you can play fabricate. You can play the cards that says that if you have an artifact, this does something. Yep. And looking at the blue from this, we have uh, a card we like, Glint Nest Crane. So it's two mana for a 1-3 flyer. So also a good blocker. Also a good blocker. And uh, when it enters the battlefield, you look at the top four cards of your library and reveal an artifact from them and put it into your hand. Yeah, so it's similar to Seagate, Oracle or cards like that. That, that is a good blocker early, a road bump, and it also gives you value. Yep. And uh, another pretty defensive card is uh, Select for inspe Inspection. It's just a blue for an instant that uh, can return target tapped creature uh, to its owner hand and then scry one. Mm -hmm. Also a pretty defensive combo trick. Yeah, exactly. Again, y your opponent attacks, 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 you're just on the defensive. Well, use this. You can scry into a removal spell or whatever. Yeah, or a stabilizer. Or a stabilizer. <clears throat> so, it, yeah, it wants to stall out the game. It's yeah. much better on the defensive than on the offensive. Yeah, on the offensive, it's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, it's more close to cards like Jesus Scrutiny, for example. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, blue-black artifact control. I guess we can move on to blue-green. Uh, uh, there we have the imperial or imperial, imperial, yeah, <laughs> Voyager. Uh, so it's one green blue. So three mana for a two three, flying trample. Nice. Uh, and when uh, it deals do combat damage to a player, you get that many energy counters. Yeah. So it's a good flyer. If you make it bigger, it's obviously even better. And it seems to be able to generate a lot of energy. Yeah, it could. And blue-green seems to be... I mean, they have a lot of cards that can both generate energy and use, use energy. Yep. Uh, so if we look at blue, for example, we have cards like um, Era of Innovation. It's one and a blue, again, for an enchantment that could go into a specific strategy. Mm -hmm. And when an artifact or artificer enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one. If you do, you get two energy. But here you also have an energy uh, sink. sink, because you can pay six energy counters and draw, uh, sacrifice the, the enchantment and draw three cards. Yeah. So it's a good way to be able to use a lot of energy. Yeah, it's, it's a, li a little, little energy sink. But we also have uh, uh, John Jeer Sentry. So uh, John Jeet, I think. John Jeet? John Jeet. Uh, three mana for a two, three. And when it enters the battlefield, you gain two energy counters. Yep. You can also tap this, pay two energy counters, and tap or untap target artifact yeah, or creature. So it's a good tapper, and you could even find untap synergies maybe with uh, creatures or artifacts that you have with. So if you have two of these, you can tap, untap, tap, <laughs> untap. <laughs> Doesn't seem that <laughs> it's a good energy sink. <laughs> uh, looking at green, we have a card like Sage of Shalia's Claim. That's just one and a green for a two one, but when it enters the battlefield, you gain three energy counters, mm -hmm. which is uh, I, mean, I think it's, it's a lot for a two two mana. Yeah, creature. and if you want uh, energy, uh, it's it's good to get three <laughs> for a, a body. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and uh, where you can put it in, for example, the Riparian Tiger, five mana for a four four trample. It also generates energy when it enters the battlefield. Yeah, so you can always use this once, even if you have no other energy. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when it attacks, you pay two energy. Yeah. And if you do, it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Yeah, and that's, then it's a 6-6 six, six trample. Yeah. So, yeah, just some ways to generate and some ways to use energy. Looks like blue-green can be good at. Mm, yes. So if we go uh, to uh, green-white instead, we have a slightly worse uh, uncommon. It looks like the gold card is the, the worst of the three we have seen so far. Yeah, but th there could be moments for it. I mean, this is Engineered Might. It's three green-whites. It's five mana. And here it shows that you could either 
go tall and make something bigger, or you could go wide and make a lot of stuff slightly bigger. Mm -hmm. And uh, this looks very much like Fabricate, because you could either choose to put counters on stuff and make them big, or yeah. you can choose to go wide and make a lot of smaller bodies. Yep. So this looks like it can just reward either way you choose to go with your Fabricate cards. Mm -hmm. So we can look at some examples. Yeah, in white we have the Glint Sleeve Artisan, uh, two in white for a 2-2 two, two, with Fabricate 1. Uh, we talked about this in our set review for, yeah, a lot for of white. Cards we have talked about. So, uh, yeah. But this is like uh, all, most of the white, I mean all the all white decks will want this, but it has the, the go wide or you can go tall. Yeah, but uh, I guess wh white looks like it will most often go wide, I think, mm -hmm. because the Fabricate cards just uh, produce a lot of bodies. Because if we look at also a Visionary Augmenter, you have four mana for a 2-1, but Fabricate 2. Mm -hmm. So you could spread it over three bodies or just make a 4-3, which doesn't look as yeah, good, I think. Just a little curve, you can curve the, the, the dwarf into the dwarf. <laughs> so it's three drop, four drop, then you have uh, five creatures, and yeah. then on turn five you can play plus two, plus two, and Vigilance. Yeah, and that is basically like an overrun, I guess. Yeah, it's a good attack. So Fabricate mm. looks like it can be good in, in uh, uh, white-green. Mm -hmm. uh, and also looking at some green cards. Uh, we have the Durable Handicraft. Uh, so it's well, another one of these enchantments. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and this could also go in black-green, I this, guess. This could uh, very much go in black-green, but you have the ability to, to pay one, when you play a creature and then you give it a counter. Yeah. So that's the go tall, I guess. But you can also pay six and sacrifice this to put a counter on everything you have. Yeah, because if you have like two regular creatures and four tokens and you sack this, I mean, you get six counters. Yeah, that's six power and toughness for, for six mana. I guess for eight mana because you... Yeah, but later it's just six mana. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it works in go wide as well. Yep. And we also have cards like Pima Outrider, which is just a 4 mana 3 3 trample, but it also has Fabricate 1. And this is like a card that it is also very good to go tall with mm -hmm. and uh, make bigger because of the trample, obviously. Yeah, it's a 9 9 attacking on turn 5. Yeah. Could be enough to kill your opponent. Maybe. So, yeah, that was all for uh, green white. Okay, time for white black. And it's not that different from, I guess, white-blue, but this is more, I guess, recursion from, from the graveyard. Because the, the Restoration Gearsmith is two white-black... It's in the name, Restoration. Yeah, uh, and you have a 3-3 three, three that uh, you can return target artifact or creature from your graveyard to your hand. Mm -hmm. So good artifacts that gives you value and bring them back, or fabricate creatures or enter the battlefield creatures yeah. that goes into white, for example, or black. Because both black and white has a lot of fabricated creatures. Yeah, and, and this archetype also cares about artifact. Yeah. Uh, so it's like a white-black artifact recursion value. And a 5-mana 3-3 three, three that brings back something from a graveyard. 4-mana. Uh, I mean 4-mana 3-3, three, three. that's great. Yeah, it, yeah it, it's the... the um, uh, the Grave Digger, but it also digs for artifacts. Mm -hmm. So we can look at some black cards that could go into this type of strategy. Yeah, we could, for, for example, have a Fortress Find. So it's two in a black sorcery. You can choose one or both. Yeah. Return target artifact from your graveyard or creature from your graveyard. So, your so it does the similar thing to the uncommon, but it can do both at the same time. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, valuable artifacts, valuable creatures. You could also g get back the the um, uh, gearsmith yeah. and chain it yep. like if you midnight scavenger do something that could also do something in the in the last yeah set. you would like a two for one out of this card yeah for example midnight scavenger into ironclad slayer that got you back a choking restraints mm, yes that was I mean a way you could play white black in the last format mm -hmm. and it seems like it's similar now yep. Uh, in black, you also have cards like uh, Doomed Oper Operative, which is a 2 mana 2-2, two, two, but as long as you control an artifact, it gets plus 1 plus 0 and death touch. And I mean, and we will see more of these cards. Give this death touch, trade for something, buy it back, have another death touch out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's annoying to play against and you go for the long game yep. and value. And in white, we have a card again, like the Visionary Augmenter. 
uh, four mana for a two one with fabricate two. Yeah. So play this. Maybe you can trade it off for something. Then yeah. recur it. Play it again. Yeah, it was just an example of a good fabricate card that could also go into this type yeah. of deck. And I mean, we can also mention uh, a good value artifact that works if you can buy it back in filigree familiar. Uh, the three mana two two that gains you two life when you when you uh, when it enters the battlefield. And if it dies, you draw a card, and then if you can recur it and play it again, you gain the two life, and mm -hmm. it's just annoying to yeah, it's see your annoying. opponent have this much value. Yep. So I guess we'll move on to black red. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yep, and there we have the unlicensed disintegration. Yep. So it's three mana for an instant. Uh, destroy target creature, so that's just good on its own. Yeah, but if you control an artifact, it also... It deals three damage to that creature's controller. Yeah, and it seems like black red is about, I mean, having artifacts, but also casting artifacts. Yeah. So it's pretty, as black red is often pretty aggressive. Mm -hmm. So we can see in black, for example, we have uh, uh, some aggressive creatures that cares about artifacts. In uh, Emerald Bruiser is a two mana three one uh, that gets menace as long as you control an artifact. Yeah, and pretty that's, aggressive. Yeah, three man. I mean, if you if you get on uh, an uh, uh, aggressive start with this, and you can like ping off your opponent's uh, blocking creatures, then this can just do a lot of damage. Yeah, and menace also. I mean, uh, has. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. The menace. And another pretty aggressive creature. Yeah, the foundry's creature. So another another. Uh, 2-1 that becomes a 3-1, but this one is a flyer. Yeah, so, so 3 mana for a 2-1 that could be a 3-1 mm -hmm. flyer, if you control an artifact again. Yep. Uh, and in red you have uh, Salivating Gremlins, and that's also 3 mana, this is for a 2-3, but when an artifact enters the battlefield, so this is uh, casting or casting a card that fabricates or something, mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, playing artifacts again gives you bonus, because this gets plus 2, plus 2, O oh, and Trample. Yep. And uh, so we could also fabricate twice, it gets plus four plus oh and trample. Yeah. And it's it's the same thing with the reckless five weaver. So two mana for a one three, but whenever an artifact enters the battlefield, you ping your opponent. Yeah, and uh, I mean, there are red removal spells that, uh, as the uncommon here, gets better if you have artifacts. Mm -hmm. There's also black removal spells that gain you life if you have artifacts. Yeah. So it looks like maybe, maybe. Uh, uh, a, a more aggressive style of, of uh, artifact carrying deck. Yeah, yeah. In most of the black cards that says something about an artifact, they are aggressive. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think uh, this would be a very aggressive deck. And obviously in that type of deck, if you have the, the disintegration, I mean, removing a blocker and also shooting for three. Yeah, it's uh, great. It works perfect in an aggressive artifact strategy. Yep. So moving on. Okay, time for... Okay, for red-white, we have Veteran Motorist. I mean, motor suggests vehicles already. It's red and it's white. It's also a pilot. It's red and white for a 3-1 Dwarf Pilot. Uh, and the three power makes it good at crewing, mm -hmm. obviously. And when it enters the battlefield, you scry to, which is... Yeah, you I search mean, through your scrapyard for the vehicles. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah well, that was it. And when it crews a vehicle, that vehicle gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. So obviously this says uh, play uh, aggro vehicle. Mm -hmm. I mean, Boros is usually aggro, and sometimes they care about equipments, now they care about uh, vehicles. vehicles instead. Yep. So let's look at some good cards. So in red we have Spire Side Infiltrator, so 3 mana, 3, 2. Good uh, at crewing. Yeah, good at crewing. And when it taps, it, has, uh, it deals 1 damage to each opponent. So yeah, and this obviously says that if you have something that's crew 3, for example, uh, then you have to tap this to crew, mm -hmm. and, uh, then and, and then it can't attack itself, but it still g gives you this aggressive uh, ping effect. Yep. Um, and we also mm -hmm. have Speedway Fanatic, another pilot. And this is a 2 mana 2 1 haste, which is aggressive in itself. And when it crews a vehicle, that vehicle also gains haste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in the beginning, you can play this turn 2, attack for 2, and then play something else, and then play a vehicle, and then crew it to give it haste attack. As, so as long as it's crew 2, or you have another creature, you can crew 3, yeah. and you can just do it. Yeah. 
<laughs> on that <track. laughs> and, and in white we have uh, another pilot to gear shift ace yeah so two mana two one first strike yeah. good on its own again yeah, very good but when it cre crews a vehicle that also gains first strike yeah so i mean if vehicles uh, are good if mm. it becomes a thing i mean having these additional bonuses to them you have a six one haste vehicle with trample crewing that with the gear shift ace yeah, pretty good <laughs> six one first strike trample yeah that is all, uh, only crew one yep so yeah that's very good and another just a white card we can have a herald of the fair not a pilot but it goes pretty well because it's a three mana three two and it also pumps something uh, when it enters battlefield, the target creature gets plus one, plus one. Mm -hmm. So you might be able to pump another creature that was maybe a two one, but you have something that says crew three, yeah. and then you For can example. maybe crew earlier or something. <laughs> but it's it still looks fine in an aggressive deck. Yep. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's it. I mean, white red is pretty straightforward. Yeah, pretty basic in this set. You just crew stuff and go curve and crew <laughs> and go aggro style. Yeah. Boros all the way. Moving on now to green, red, or mm -hmm. red, green. Red, green. We have the Voltaic Brawler. What a card. Uh, red, green, 3 2. That's just good. And when it enters the battlefield, you get two energy counters. Which is good. And when it attacks, you can give it. When you, if you pay one energy count, uh, one energy, you can give it plus one, plus one, and trample. So on turn three, it can attack as a 4 3 trample. Yeah. And it can also do that on the next turn. Mm -hmm. And since red, green is about energy aggro yeah basically uh i mean this might be able to be a 4-3 trample all the time <laughs> i think this will if there's a red uh, green aggro they can standard i think they would play four of this yeah, this should see some standard play it's very 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 pushed uh we can look at, a, at some red cards that goes into this aggro style for example we have the mole fist door buster a four <laughs> mana four two busting ag doors. aggressive uh, stats when it enters the battlefield again, you get the energy, which you want in this deck. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it attacks, you may pay an energy counter if you do target creature can't block. So it's it's similar to the Fiend Binder, mm -hmm. for example, in the Aggressive Human deck. But this has more power, and uh, instead of tapping, you just say it can't block. Knock, knock, too late. <laughs> <laughs> knock, knock, too late. Busting down the doors. Yeah, yeah, and then you're just dead. And another red card, uh, which is, uh, I think this is pretty cool. Aether Touch Renegade. That's the guy that's touching Aether. Yeah, he's touching Aether. <laughs> Aether Torch Renegade. Yeah, but he's touching it. <laughs> uh, so, 3 mana 1 2. Not super aggressive, but no. when it enters the battlefield, you gain 4 energy. Which you want. Yes. And uh, you can tap this, pay 2 to ping something. Yeah, pay 2 energy. Uh, yeah. Yeah, of course, energy. Or you can tap this, pay 8 energy, and deal 6 damage to target opponent. So early it can be a pinger uh, that can remove shunt blockers, it <clears> can <throat> do that extra damage that uh, kills the blocker. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, late game, if you just have energy, uh, or you save energy for it, I mean, it can be the finisher. Yes, let's say you're very aggressive turn 2, 3, 4, 5, then you, play, then you just finish off the game with this card. Yeah, it looks uh, sweet. And um, and in green, uh, for example, we have the Thriving Rhino. Uh, three mana, two, three, but it also enters the battlefield uh, with two energy counters. Uh, and when it attacks, you may pay two energy counters and put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So it's pretty aggressive attacker on turn four. Yeah, super aggressive. And you can just keep doing this every turn it attacks if you have the energy for it. Yeah, so a uh, good common for the archetype. And we also have an uncommon a Long Tusk Cub. So yeah. two mana, two, two. Uh, again, when uh, not when it enters the battlefield, but when it deals combat damage to a player, you get two energy counters. You want to curl with this. Turn yeah. two, play this, hopefully get the hit in and start generating energy and then uh, put the counters on it again. You can also play this turn two. And turn three, you can play the Thriving Rhino, pay the two energy to give it a plus plus one counter. Yeah. An attack for a 3-3. Three, three. Maybe you, your opponent just has a 2-2 two, two, and it can't block. Yeah. So you gain two more energy. And, yeah. yeah, the curving this into the Rhino obviously is a good combo. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 so another pretty straightforward archetype. Bashing in some heads. Gruel. And using energy. Yep. Uh, so we move on now to blue-red. Huh? Yeah, in blue-red we have the Whirler Virtuoso. So one blue red, so three mana for a two three. 
And when it enters the battlefield, you get three energy counters. Yeah, so so it seems to care about energy here yeah. also, <clears throat> in some way. And if you pay three energy, you can create a 1-1 one, one topter with flying. Yeah, so it, 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 there, there you get both a flyer and you get an artifact that enters the battlefield, which could be relevant for a lot of cards as well. So it's a bit... Uh, I mean, I guess in this archetype you could potentially go... Uh, some sort of tempo deck. Mm -hmm. You could maybe build a deck that cares about uh, triggering uh, when artifacts enter the battlefield again. Yeah. Or and, any... and you could have cards with with uh, flying and try to tempo them out that way. Yep. And it's it's not uh, super easy to name exactly what this does, but uh... no. But you have cards like the Weld Fast Wingsmith, which is a four mana three three. But when an artifact enters the battlefield, it gains flying. Mm -hmm. So if you uh, th there you have a pretty good attacker in the air, and you care uh, again about about making thopters or playing other artifacts. Yeah. And the the only other thopter maker we found. Yeah, it was the experimental aviator. Yeah. Five mana O three flyer that creates two one one thopters. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I, I'm pretty down on this card, but. Um, uh, it does something, yeah. and it, it could be decent in this deck, it might also be decent in like a flicker deck or something. We just looked at more uh, topter makers, I guess. Yep. Uh, and in red, uh, there are some cards that care about artifacts entering the battlefield, which we saw in other archetypes. And here you could, for example, play Quicksmith Genius, which is a 3-mana three 3-2 three uh, that you could, I mean, attack with as a tempo card, uh, but the uh, you can also you rummage. rummage when you play uh, um, artifacts, and uh, blue red usually likes to look through the deck. Yeah. So I guess this could fit here, maybe. And uh, there's also cards like harnessed lightning, which uh, obviously is good in the red green yeah, and so on. Because you don't really need to generate energy to make this good. No. But but I guess you can. You can cast this, get three energy, then make an, a counter <coughs> token that cre makes you be able to ramage and attack for three in the air. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there there will be. I guess there will be some shenanigans. There will be blue red is usually a lot of spells. There can be mm -hmm. thopters. There can be tempo. We'll see what what its main focus is. But uh, we have just shown you some cards that could go into yep. the strategy. And the last we have. Mm. Black green, so uh, and we in, and that card is hazardous conditions. Uh, two green black or two black green, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Creatures with no uh, counters on them gets minus two minus two until end of turn. Yeah, so it says that you should put counters on your creatures. Yeah, but the, the the card is pretty boring. Uh, pretty bad. I guess. We don't know because we haven't played with it yet, but maybe minus two, minus two is super good in this form. Yeah, and in some matchups, if you board it in, it might be super duper. Yeah. But it's a bit expensive, and usually these minus two, minus two effects aren't. They are. They're not that good to mean. No. Uh, but now we know. Okay, there there could be thopters, there could be servos, but still, it looks a bit boring compared to the other. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we can look at some cards that could go into this archetype. For example, in black we have Lawless Broker, 3 mana, 3, 2, and when it dies you put a counter on target creature you control. Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. We could also so show you the Aetherborn Marauder, uh, 4 mana, 2, 2, Flying Lifelink. So that's decent. Yeah. Uh, but when it enters the battlefield, you can uh, put any number of plus 1, plus 1 counters. Yeah, you can move. Yeah, you can move, but you can put them on Aetherborn Marauder. Yeah, from, but you have to, yeah, from other stuff. <laughs> from other permanents you control. So and this is payoff. This is one payoff card. Um, and It looks very good. Yeah. I mean, you don't even have to put uh, move every counter you own. You can choose how many. Yeah. Uh, and in green, for example, you have Armorcraft Judge, another very good payoff card for uh, having creatures with counters on them. I guess you don't want to play this after you moved all the counters. <laughs> no, 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 but still, I mean, when, when it enters the battlefield, it's a 4 mana 3 3, and when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card for each creature you control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. Mm -hmm. So if you have a deck with a lot of fabricate or uh, other stuff that makes you put counters on your creatures, I mean, drawing, yeah. just drawing two cards would be awesome. But if you just say you have this in your starting hand and you have two fabricate creatures, then you won't create 
uh, one, plus, uh, one one you will put counters on instead. Then, then maybe draw two cards. And obviously late in the game you might draw more mm -hmm. than that. And another green card. Yeah, the Koo Jar Seed Sculptor. So it's a two mana one two. But when it enters the battlefield you can put a one plus one counter on target creature you control. Yeah, so you could curve this into something with Fabricate. I mean there's a black uncommon that fabricates for two mm -hmm. into either Armorcraft Judge or uh, the uh, Aetherborn Marauder and do good stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, earlier there, there has been like a Simic archetype that did a lot of things with counters. That was not that good, but hopefully it will be better here. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that was it. Yeah, that was all the archetypes. Ten archetypes and uh, most of them are pretty clear what they're doing and some of them are a bit less clear. But I still think we have a, a, a pretty good uh, sense of yeah, what, what so they're too. about. I think so too. So uh, we, if you don't agree with us, please you can always mail us on, on our Twitter. Go to our Twitter account, uh, Loads of Brothers. Yeah, and you can obviously uh, comment, comment on here. Uh, the video, uh, just feedback, or if you know something we don't, mm -hmm. or just if you think it's helpful. I mean, it's always nice to have positive comments also. Yep. But uh, yeah, uh, I guess that's it for the archetype discussion. And uh, hopefully it will be useful before the pre-release, that's the upcoming weekend. This weekend. Yeah. So yeah, I guess that's it. And as we said, uh, visit our Twitter if you want, uh, or just look at our draft videos. We will do a lot of them when the set is up. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's two weeks from now or something. Yeah, soon. Not soon enough. Not soon enough. <laughs> and okay. good luck at the pre-release and hope this was useful. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.